Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful tea leaves scarf. I used a slow changing variegated yarn, so it makes for this really lovely kind of neutral gradient scarf. And we're going to talk more about the yarn in just a moment. The stitches that we're going to be using in this project are rows of just regular double crochets and then rows of puff stitches. And I'm going to show you how to make both of those stitches as well. The finished scarf measures about eight and a half inches wide and about 70 inches long. So it's a nice generous uh, size scarf. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook, and your yarn. I'm gonna be using a yarn called Scarfy by Lion Brand. And the thing that I like about this is it's a very generous size uh, ball of yarn. I'm going to be using 312 yards of this. Now if you'd like to substitute yarn that's perfectly fine, just use about 312 yards of a yarn that when you look on the yarn label recommends the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. Um, this is also a 5 or bulky on the yarn weight scale. Um, so just look for that uh, if you are substituting yarn. And whether you use a variegated yarn like I'm using or you use something solid, that's equally lovely as well. If you'd like to replicate this color that I'll be using, this is called the Cream Slash Chopitz color number 206. And um, it does have dye lots if you're using multiple bars of, balls of yarn if you want to uh, make your project a little bit longer. But I'm going to be using just one ball of this. So let's get started. Okay, to begin our scarf, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, pull up and tighten. Our scarf has a starting chain of 30. Now if you'd like to change the width of the scarf to make it narrower or wider, it is a multiple of two plus four. So if you're unfamiliar with that concept, multiples are, um, for example, this one is two plus two plus two plus two plus two until you get the width that you like and then add four more chains onto that. So a multiple of two plus four when you're making your starting chain, okay? Now this scarf, like I said, is uh, has a starting chain of 30. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. Okay? So here's our starting chain, and we don't want it to be too tight. So if, you're, if your starting chain is too tight, just go up a hook size for your chain only, and then switch back to the 6.5 for the remainder of the project, if your chain is too tight. If you're able to get it loose enough, that's fine. Okay, so let's get started on row one. For row one, we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So one, two, three, and four. So we're going to work a double crochet. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. Then we're going to chain one. Then we're going to skip a chain, and in the chain after that, we're going to do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one. Just like that. Skip the next chain, and the chain after that, do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one. Skip the next chain, and the chain after that, double crochet, chain one. I'm just going to get a little bit more yarn here. You'll find with a larger hook, you'll just kind of zip through your yarn, okay? Skip the next chain and the chain after that. Work a double crochet, chain one. We're going to be doing this all the way across. Skip the next chain and the chain after that. Double crochet, chain one. Skip the next chain and the chain after that. Same thing. Double crochet, chain one. Skip the next chain. 
in the next chain, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that. We'll work a double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, same thing. Double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain, in the next chain after that, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, we're getting towards the end, double crochet, chain one. We're at the last two chains, so skip the next chain and the very last chain, work a double crochet. We're not going to do the chain one part, just the double crochet in that last chain. So row one should look like this, it looks like a tiny little ladder. So let's move on to row two. Okay, so for row two, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Now in this first double crochet that we come to, we're going to work a puff stitch and then a chain one. So for the puff stitch for this pattern, we're going to wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook, see that stitch right there at the top of that double crochet? Insert the hook into that stitch and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, go back into that same stitch and bring up a loop. You'll now have five loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into that same stitch, you'll now have seven loops on the hook. Next, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through all seven loops on the hook, just like that. Now chain one, okay? So it'll look like that, a nice little puff stitch. Okay, let's hop over to the next stitch, this next double crochet stitch, and make another puff stitch. So insert the hook, bring up a loop, three loops are on our hook. Yarn around hook, insert it back into that stitch, bring up a loop, five loops are on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the stitch again, seven loops are on the hook. Once you have seven loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all seven. See, I'm kind of wiggling my hook a little. You may need to kind of shimmy it through. And then chain one to close the stitch, okay? So it kind of looks like that, okay? Let's do this all the way across. Insert the hook, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook. Yarn around hook, bring up a loop, five loops are on the hook, yarn around hook, bring up a loop, seven loops are on our hook. Yarn around hook, bring it through all seven loops and chain one. Okay, these puff stitches give it a lot of really pretty texture. So let me just get a little bit more yarn so we can work through our puff stitches. Puff stitches are also nice for uh, accessories because they kind of trap um, a little bit of heat in, but these more open double crochets underneath will allow some air circulation too. Okay, let's hop over to the next double crochet. And just work it the same way. Three loops on the hook, five loops on the hook, seven loops on the hook. Yarn around hook, bring through all seven loops and chain one. Next stitch, same exact thing. We're doing this all the way across. Three loops, five loops, seven loops. If you wanna practice, um, and see this in more detail, just go back to where we made this first puff stitch. It's a little bit awkward if you have never made one before. They sometimes take a little practice. And with puff stitches, you want your, your yarn to kind of line up nicely like this. See how it's kind of just all kind of nice and neat. Now, sometimes you'll make one and it'll look a little sloppy. Just pull it apart and, you know, just back up a little bit and make it again. It's absolutely no big deal, okay? So we have three loops, we have five loops, and we have seven loops. Bring it through all seven loops and chain one. Next stitch, three loops, five loops, seven loops. Sometimes what I like to do is kind of pinch the bottom and kind of like get everything nice and lined up. 
go through all seven loops and chain one. Next stitch, three loops, five loops, seven loops. You can kind of get it all straightened out, bring it through, and chain one. We are more than halfway done our row. Three loops, five loops, seven loops. Bring it through all seven loops and chain one. Next stitch, we're getting towards our home stretch. So three loops, five loops, seven loops. Get all nice and neat if you need to. And chain one. One more time, three loops, five loops, seven loops. It also helps too when you wrap the yarn around the hook. See how I'm turning it so that my hook now is pointing down? That'll get it, you know, through there a little bit easier when you pull it through. Sometimes it can catch a little bit and you might need to take it apart and redo it. Okay, so it's looking very pretty. All right, we just have a few left. Three loops, five loops, seven loops, yarn around hook all seven loops and chain one. My yarn's kind of creeping over there. All right, we have one stitch left. Let's work that last puff stitch of our row. Three loops, five loops, seven loops to make the puff. Bring it through all seven loops. Okay. It's looking very elegant. All right, so we have our turning chain from the previous row. What you'll wanna do is count one, two, three chains up and just work a double crochet into that turning chain, that third chain up from that turning chain. Okay, so row two is complete. Let's move on to row three. Okay, row three is super duper easy. All right, let's chain three. One, two, three. Now what we're going to do is you'll want to locate the stitch at the top of each one of your puffs. So if you look at this, this is our puff stitch from the previous row. This is kind of like the back side of it. You're going to notice each one of these puff stitches has a little loop in the top. So you can see that little loop in the top there. If you hop over to the next one, you can see that, that little loop in the top. That's where we're going to be working our double crochets. So we did a chain three and we turned. So work a double crochet chain one into each one of these puff stitches, okay? So wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that top stitch. See how you can see that top stitch there? Bring up a loop and then work your double crochet and then chain one, okay? That's all you have to do. See, once now that I've worked the stitch in there, you can kind of see how it's a little loop on top, okay? Let's do the same thing in each puff stitch all the way across. Double crochet, chain one. Next puff stitch, double crochet, chain one, next puff, double crochet, chain one. I'll get a little bit more yarn before it creeps back over. Likes to follow me around. <laughs> okay, next puff stitch, double crochet, chain one, next puff, double crochet, chain one, Next stitch, double crochet, chain one. Making these double crochet, I mean these chain ones between each of these double crochets is gonna give us a more open uh, look, okay? So we did a double crochet, then a chain one. Next puff, double crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain one. Next puff, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and the next puff stitch, double crochet, chain one. Okay, we're out of puff stitches, so our row is almost complete. Let's go back to this turning chain, the same thing we did in the previous row. We're going to count one, two, three chains up, and then we're going to work a double crochet. Oops, we didn't do our chain one. So we did a double crochet, chain one. Now, work the third chain up and just work a double crochet into that third chain up on your turning chain row. Whoops, I just dropped my stitch. 
It happens, right? Okay, so double crochet in that. It's basically just the topmost chain, that third chain up. Okay, so row three is complete and it looks very pretty. Now let's flip it over and see how it looks on this side. Our puff stitches are all nice and neat. They look very pretty and this neutral yarn is setting off these stitches very nicely. Now this yarn has a, a slight kind of fuzzy soft quality but you can still see the stitch definition which is nice when you're doing uh, you know fancier stitches like the puff stitch. Okay so to finish our scarf we're going to keep repeating rows two and three over and over and over until our scarf is as long as we'd like it to be. Now I have this big ball of yarn here so it's going to be a nice long generous scarf. It's not going to be a you know a skimpy scarf at all. So let's keep repeating rows two and three over and over and over. Now remember row two was the puff stitch row. Row three was these double crochets where we worked them into the puff stitches. So just keep repeating rows two and three over and over. If you need to go back in the video um, to repeat, you know, to, to keep going, that's um, very helpful as well. So I'm gonna keep working my rows and then we'll rejoin once we get towards the end of the scarf and I'll show you how to finish off your scarf, weave in the end, and um, you know make it look pretty when you do your finish work so um, I'm gonna keep going we'll rejoin in just a moment okay so I'm just working that very last stitch of the scarf so I continued along with the rows of puff stitches and double crochet stitches and it looks very pretty and this is a simple enough stitch sequence too to show off this variegated yarn so you can see it the color transitions it looks very pretty has a lot of nice texture and it's very elegant okay so once you're done with your scarf and if you notice too this is not necessary but if you want your ends to look symmetrical I ended on the double crochet row because when we started our scarf we began on a double crochet uh, row so if you want them to mirror each other um, just end on a double crochet row it's not necessary but just as a side note so once you're finished just cut the yarn and I don't have quite enough I used every last bit I don't have quite enough for another row so I just knitted an, or crocheted until I ran out of yarn okay so just fasten off and then grab your tapestry needle go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and then just weave that in one direction just through these last row of stitches here and then just pull that through and then come through in the other direction with that just like that and then just trim and then you'll have a, an end on the other side now if you use multiple balls of yarn or multiple colors you might have more ends but if you used this particular yarn, you'll have just one at the beginning and one at the end. You need to give that a fresh cut, that's okay too. Sometimes when you're working on a piece and the little tail's been hanging down the whole time, it can come unraveled at the end there. So just give it a fresh cut if needed. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna weave in one direction with our tapestry needle. And then come back in the other direction just to lock that tail in. Hopefully keep it from popping out in the future. And then you can just trim the yarn and your scarf is complete. So that is how you crochet the tea leaf scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.